Welcome to the Mark Jackson Show. I'm Mark Jackson. We're on the Come and Talk to Me Network. Special shout out to my guys, Cam and Mace, just because. We're in beautiful downtown LA. I'm joined by my incredible co-host, Blue. What's up, man? I'm feeling good. How you feeling? Doing outstanding, thank you. That's good. That's good. I'm excited to record today. Let's go. Let's go. Shout out to our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy. Click the link in the description below. They're matching up to $100. Go right now. Put the code MARK. That's M-A-R-K, and they'll match it. Appreciate y'all. It feels good to be back today. It's good. I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah. It's a lot of, it's a lot of love. We're getting love in the comments. I want to say that I appreciate the fans. I appreciate, um, I don't even look at y'all as fans, man. I look at y'all as friends. Every time I go through the comment section, I know you don't got time to go through the comment section, but I see it, and they showing some love. I appreciate it. They're my friends, though. They, they, <laughs> they're not your friends. No, they're not my friends. What do you mean, man? No, no, it's, you know, it, it, it goes both ways. It goes. So I appreciate them, absolutely, yeah. no doubt. Appreciate it. Oh, you experience the, the love and the hate. So yeah, you know, yeah, so you don't get caught up in it. I feel that. But I, I appreciate it, no I question. Feel that. I feel that. But keep the comments coming. I appreciate it, and y'all my friend. Y'all might not be his <laughs> friend, but I love y'all. So um, today we're going to switch it up. We're going to do a, a couple questions from you guys. It's going to be some questions from uh, the comment section, some that we got on Instagram. And uh, is that cool with you? Yes, sir. All right, let's, uh, let's start from the top. We got um, a question from Illwill912 who asks you, your brother Troy, a.k.a. Escalade Jackson, was an one legend. Do you think he would have made a good power forward in the league? Boy, my, my brother uncle. Troy, my younger brother... Legend. Uh, I, I, I do. At 6'10", the biggest in the family, point guard skills, the ability to handle, initiate offense, post up. Um, his only problem, obviously, was his weight. He was, you know, a big guy, and he was the youngest of, of uh, five of us. And he was the biggest, not just in size, but also size. But um, no doubt about it, he would have been NBA power forward, and he would have had a sustained career. Funny story about him is I remember him splurting up being a high school star and then going to the University of Louisville and playing and then uh, didn't play professional basketball right away. So I can remember going to the mall with him after he had joined the N1 mixtape. And I'm thinking, it's just my little brother with N1 mixtape. You know, he's having a cute time. He's, you know, and we're walking through the mall and this is the first time this ever happened. Walking through the mall and somebody goes, uh, excuse me, excuse me. You mind if I get a picture? So I'm looking at my swag on a thousand, like, sure, you know, Troy. I call him Troy, Escalade, take the picture. And then the person goes, no, no, no. I mean, can I get a picture with Escalade, not you? So I'm sitting there like, oh, you want me to take the picture? This is the superstar all of a sudden. And he could have died at that moment and it, it, he would have been fulfilled because that's, that's, that's what he looked forward to. So it was an incredible story. I'm incredibly proud of my younger brother, the impact that he had. To this day, people still come up to me and, and Talk about, you know, an encounter they had with him, which is the most important thing, in the way we were raised. I hear that story. So you had a chance to, to walk, a, walk a step in my shoes for a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to be going to the mall in a minute. I, I see all the comments about nah, Blue nah, and man. It's been his a eyes and how he looked and all that. I mean, what the heck? It's been a long time coming. I've been taking pictures for, for Mark Jackson for a long time. Don't man. glaze over that. Let me ask you a question. Have you seen the comments about your eyes and your looks and, you know, I mean, I, I heard them, I seen them. Yeah, I get them, I get them yeah. when I go to Starbucks sometimes. Yeah, no one, it's a, it's a blessing. They, yeah, no wonder they're your friends. <laughs> you know, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, my friend, hey, relax, <laughs> relax, relax. All right, next question, man. From Mr. iBug, he wants to know, how do you think Larry Bird and Magic Johnson would fare in today's NBA? I believe that if you are an all-time great, no matter whether you played in the 60s, 70s, 80s, or the, you know, 2024, I believe that your game translates. When we're talking about Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, we are talking about two guys that's in a special room with anybody that's ever played this game. They're in that room. So in my opinion, the impact would be even greater because the, the rules benefit the offensive guys. You can't touch them. Those guys would have their way. They're all-time greats no matter when they played. The same way if you took LeBron James and put him in, 1970 or 1980 or whenever, at any point in the history of this game, he'd be, he'd be LeBron James and we'd recognize his greatness. So those two guys certainly would have a similar impact and I believe even greater playing in today's game. Any other players during your time where you'd say this player would cook 
in today's game. Like, like for me, <laughs> no, off top, for real, off, me, off top for me, a guy like Rick Smith is underrated. But in today's game, I believe he'd be one of them. They'd be looking like, yo, this dude got game, game. Rick Smith's a former teammate of mine with the Indiana Pacers, seven foot four inches tall, pure jump shot, skilled big man on the block, um, would definitely be a max player in today's game. And your question, any other guys? I believe a bunch of them. And that's not being disrespectful to today's guys. But when you talk about the point guard play and the perimeter play, you had skilled dudes that if you just simply say you can't touch them, you can't put a hand on them, they're going to dictate where they get to on, on, on the court and make you pay the price defensively night in and night out. Uh, and, I, and it's not underestimating today's talent. It's just giving props to the guys that played in my day. Now, I'd be a regular dude, but I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the other guys. You'd be a regular dude in today's game? I'm not going to argue with you. Huh? If All you, these if, shooters nowadays, you might you might catch John Stockton if you was playing today. <laughs> no, no comment. No comment. You come off the screen. All right, let's go to the next one, man. As a Portland fan, he asks, looking at Scoot Henderson, what would you give for off-season homework to get him to the next level as a franchise point guard in his sophomore season next year? It's a great question. I'm a uh, family to the Portland Trailblazers my daughter works for the Portland Trailblazers. Got a lot of respect for that front office, that ownership group, head coach and Chauncey Billups, obviously family to me. Take care of mine, I'm gonna take care of you. Um, but I don't think they need any suggestions from me. They're doing an outstanding job developing talent. And the thing I would do is, Scoot, take some time off, a week or two, get away, go on vacation, and then get him back in the gym. You're gonna be with me. We're gonna break down game film, Game situations, we're going to get on the court. We're going to have summer league. Make sure you're around the players. Make sure you're around the coaches. I'm going to assign a coach to you specifically to work on different things that you need to work on. We're going to build on this year, the season that you've had. We're going to make sure you're healthy enough to play a whole season next year and impact from day one. But you got valuable experience playing behind Malcolm Brogdon, Anthony Simons, the impact of watching those guys on the court night in and night out. Let's come back bigger, better, and badder. But it starts with taking some time off, then let's get right back to the gym. You got to make sure these guys stay in the gym. And if they don't want to be in the gym, find somebody else. But he's a guy that the, the future's awfully bright for Scoot Henderson and the Portland Trailblazers. Yeah, Scoot got game, man. How much of it <clears throat> is the Trailblazers putting more players around him? They certainly have to do that. They have to improve the talent. They will do that via free agency, via the draft. And, and, and improve play by the young guys that they had. The valuable experience of being able to play in, for lack of a better term, meaningless games this year and give those guys valuable playing time is going to make them better. So the jump is going to be for real individually and collectively when you talk about the Trailblazers. Next question from Coach Anthony Jackson. My he, Anthony Jackson? That's my Anthony Jackson, okay, too. That's, that's my uncle, man. Shout Come out to my brother. Go ahead. Yeah, Coach Anthony Jackson. If you have one shot to win the championship, not saying a three-pointer, any shot, who would you rather have catching and shooting the shot? Ray Allen, Reggie Miller, or Steph Curry? And this is him right here. Non-political answers only. <laughs> <laughs> he got to throw in there that he knows me. <laughs> he got to make sure. Oh, my goodness. Um, I coached Steph Curry. I played with Reggie Miller. And my mom and Ray Allen's mom were like this, so... Shout out, Miss Flo, Flo Allen. I'm going to say, because Reggie would understand, I'm taking Steph because he's the greatest shooter that's ever lived, but it's not obvious. I'm taking Steph, clearly, with the decision. But Reggie Miller being the fact that I was in position to watch him come off the floppy action, the three down, the three up action that we called, and I delivered the pass on point, and night in and night out, whether it was with the brightest lights or dim lights, the biggest moment or regular moment, he responded by lacing the bottom of the net. So I, I, I go with Steph Curry, but a close second is Reggie Miller because uh, I lived it. I got to go with Steph too, but I got I to gotta put some respect on Ray Allen's name, man. I didn't disrespect him. No, no, but I mean, you said that you, you, you made it a two-man race and it, it's a legit third option. Yeah, but if put it like this. If, I play, if, Ray, if Ray Allen came off the floppy action or the three down or three up action with me as the point guard and I delivered him the basketball and he knocked down those big shots in those big moments, I put Reggie in third place. So it's not, I'm not disrespecting Ray Allen. I lived it. I watched it. And um, I've seen people disappointed going home with the results being Reggie Miller smiling and talking trash. So 
I'm giving Reggie a close second. You can't go wrong. And I would say you can take, in my opinion, a bunch of guys I played with, our coach, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, off the top of my head, played with Dell Curry, played with Reggie Miller, played with Dale Ellis, played with Eddie Johnson, played with Chris Mullen. You can put them in the gym with five other of the other greatest shooters that ever lived and have a shootout, and any one of them can come out the winner. That's how great a shooters that they are, and it's not disrespect to say who would come out. It just depends on the day because I've seen the best do it, and it's, it's unbelievable to watch. Off that question, if you just need a bucket at the end of the game, not limited to those three players all time, who are you going with? For a shot? You need a bucket. I forgot I was coached by Larry Bird also, so Larry Bird's in the discussion. I don't know who I'm taking. I got to do some more thinking, but... All time? That's the, that's the name? No, I didn't say... I didn't give an answer. I just added him to the, to the on, list. Come man. Uncle Pee Wee said no political, man. He going to call me like, did you let him do the political stuff? I'm going to have to say no. Come on, give me something. I don't know the answer. That's, that's tough. You can't go wrong. You can go with Steph Curry. You can go with Reggie Miller. You can go with Larry Bird. You, it's, what, it, what about Mike? No, if, if it's a spot up three. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Not a spot up three. You just need a bucket at the end of the game. Oh, well, no, 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 no. That's the question? Yeah. I, I misunderstood. Yeah, that's the you question. you need a bucket. I'm taking Mike or Kobe. you missing somebody. Uh, you, now, you fought me to give an answer. You miss I give it, an answer. Because I know now. what your answer is going to be. And you missing somebody that's clearly in that discussion. Who? The man from Akron. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean? I'm not, I'm, I love him. He's in the GOAT discussion. He's had an incredible career, and he is absolutely 100% great. I've witnessed it. But if you ask me one shot for all the marbles, I'm taking the guys that I said. Do you put Braun on, on that level of clutch? Yes. I'm not disrespecting him. Right, no right, no right, question. Right, I'm, right. I'm not. The difference with the guys that I named when I named rattled off 10 names Yeah is their ability to shoot. So I rattle off the names with the gift of shooting. LeBron James, that's not his gift. So I'm not disrespecting him, but if you're just talking about his level of greatness and, and, and should he be in the discussion, if I'm designing a play, I got no problem designing a final play for LeBron James. He's proven. Are you trying to start trouble? No, I'm just, I'm just, trying, I'm just pulling on you. I'm just no, pulling no, on you, Pops. You know, I'm he's, pulling he's, on he's, you. He's, he's legit, and I got nothing but love and respect for him. Good. All right, let's go to the next question. Greg Simmons asks, grew up in money earning Mount Vernon, and he says, can you share a cool story about an experience with Dwight Myers, a.k.a. Heavy D? Dwight Myers. Legend. Oh, we love in the house. Money <laughs> earning Mount Vernon. Um, shout out my guy, I'll be sure also, money earning Mount Vernon. But Heavy D, and another, you know, part of the benefit or the blessing of growing up in New York City and playing for the New York Knicks my first five years is the relationships that were developed with guys just coming to Knick games or guys seeing them at restaurants or around the city or, quite honestly, at that time at clubs. Um, Heavy D was a legend and taken far too early, but more so than his ability to rap and entertain and dance was just his bubbly personality, his affectionate, warm, loving, caring, personality, watching how he treated people and interacted with people, whether it be fans or friends or just regular folks. That's, that's, that's how you can tell how important, how valuable, or how serious of a person an individual it is, how they treat people when the cameras aren't on. I, I've seen dudes, the cameras on, I sign all those autographs. I smile, I pick up your baby, I hug you and all of that. No cameras, nobody around. Walk away, got nothing to say, disrespectful. But uh, Heavy D was a class, class act. Brilliant performer, brilliant artist, and somebody that, I, like I said, had gone too soon. But I got a lot of respect for him and a lot of love for him. He treated me and mine uh, tremendously. But um, still think of all the hit songs and the ones that we would have gotten if he hadn't gone too soon. But a legend, a true legend. Impact that even his songs don't show the impact that he had on the music industry. I got nothing but love for you, baby. <laughs> you ain't know I had that, right? <laughs> nah, that was nice. Okay, okay. That was nice. You okay. know what's messed up? Huh? There's somebody in 2024 sitting there watching going, what did he just say? They yeah. have no clue yeah. that I just spit a heavy only D verse. The only reason I know is because you was blasting, yeah. blasting all, the, all the heavy D joints, so yeah. I know it, but I know Jet is somewhere like, what is this dude talking about? Jet, Jet Stanley, who does the music for the show, my middle son, incredible job. So 
Yeah. Just didn't want you to they didn't think who's Jet? You randomly spit out Jet's name. No, nah, no, nah, we talked about Jet last episode. I they know my brother. My bad, my bad. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> it's big money. All right. Shelby T asks, as a Bulls fan, how does Chicago become a contender? Patience. Um building on a lead. You stumbled onto some Bright young talent this year. You look at Kobe White getting the opportunity to play and play extended minutes, having a great season, making the right decisions. And probably the first thing is get healthy. Zach Levine's got to be healthy. DeMar DeRozan got to stay healthy. Vucevic got to be healthy. And then you got to make the right moves in the draft and free agency, but make the proper decisions that give you an opportunity to make the jump. I don't think they've made a jump. Billy Donovan, an outstanding head coach from uh, New York City, Long Island, Guy my same age that I played against in college, played against in high school, and uh, we had some incredible battles, some incredible wars in, in, in college. And I remember a specific game in high school where I'm like, this little white guy got game, man. I mean, he was and, – and then in my rookie year, we didn't have a backup point guard. So we picked up different guys throughout the course of the year. And at some point midway through the, my rookie year, we picked up Billy Donovan. And I'm talking about he had the pump fake, one dribble, two dribble – down to a pa- masterfully. Mm-hmm. And every day in practice, we do one-on-one drills and couldn't guard him. <laughs> couldn't guard him because he had it down to a science. So he's clearly an incredible basketball mind and without a doubt would be a Hall of Famer when you're talking about his impact winning two national championships at the University of Florida, being successful in the league. But I think the Chicago Bulls are headed in the right direction. They've got to make the proper decisions and then uh, uh, continue to put the pedal to the metal when it comes speeding up the process, the improvement process of their young talent. Add to the list of people that cooked you, Billy Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we this go. This is well, perfect. What we, I love wait, wait, the story. Wait, hold on. Huh? We beat them in high school, and they beat us. This is a, this is a funny story. My, my next-door neighbor was, he was playing in the Big East tournament. My next-door neighbor was, he was a builder, so he, he was picking up concrete. And I'm like, Mr. You. Uh, you need some help? So he's like, sure, Mark. I'm a young kid. I'll go help him pick up the bricks and put them in the back of the car. Well, we played the next night in the Big East tournament. I wake up, my back is on fire. I can barely move. So now I got to play in the Big East tournament against Providence. <laughs> and Rick Patino was the head coach. They had a young assistant coach, a graduate assistant by the name of Jeff Van Gundy, who still talks about it to this day. I was scoreless in the first half. I couldn't move. If you look at the film, you could tell something's wrong with me. I'm bringing the ball to the floor like, like an old man. I had 17 in the second half. We lost. So we lost to Billy Donovan, Rick Pitino, and Jeff Van Gundy in the Big East tournament. Uh, but I, I made sure that when we picked them up after that rookie, in that rookie year, I made sure there came a point where I had to you know, take care of business. Just, just from, he didn't know what I was doing, but I just had to make sure. You got your give back? I had to, I had to get my give back. No question. But shout out to... Jeff Van Gundy, Rick Pitino, and, and, and the great Billy Donovan. That's a legendary coaching lineup to have on one team. Yeah. That is unbelievable. And, and, and you know Coach Pitino. He works his staff. Yeah. Jeff Van Gundy has some incredible stories about working for Coach Pitino, having to be in the office early and leave late and go on errands and all of that. But Jeff Van Gundy was an assistant coach early on in my career with the Knicks also. That's how we initially got close. And uh, watching him, it's a crime that he's not a head coach in this league. I'm talking about as smart a basketball mind that I've ever been around in my life. And I've been around a lot of greats. Uh, it is a crime. People say I should be a head, head coach. I, I'm not going to argue with him. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Jeff Van Gundy, there's so many guys trying to be him. And uh, brilliant basketball mind. Look forward to having him on this show. And he's a player's coach. He knows the game. And he knows watching him behind the scenes – he knows it in and out. Whatever whatever circumstance occurs, he knows what happened just now, what difference he would make, what occurred three layers beneath that jump shot off of a down screen. He's he's brilliant. Love he that can't guy. Can't be stated enough. Love him. And and funny thing about him, he's different than me because we'll be like, remember when we played you in 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 '92 in the playoffs or '94 in the playoffs? I'm like. No, he's like the third quarter. You you backed us down and you ran the same. I'm like, I don't. How do you remember all of that? You know, you got fouled at the end of the third. No, I don't know. I don't remember that. But he remembers to a T 
situations like that, he's a he's a he's an incredible basketball mind and somebody that uh, I, I truly believe should be a head coach in this league and hopefully he gets another opportunity. Let's get back to the questions. This is one right of your alley, pops. Ball Bronny asks, why do you think injuries are so prominent in today's game compared to when you were playing? First of all, let's make sure we continue to send these questions in. This is I'm mean, I'm really yeah. enjoying this, and these are good questions. I believe that the reason why we're seeing so many injuries is because of a different time. I talked about winning the Rookie of the Year trophy and then going to play in the park um, the next day at 3.30 in the afternoon with regular dudes. Today, they would say, no, don't do that. You, you're damaging your, 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 your legs or you're risking injury or you want to take care of your body. I won the Rookie of the Year, and before every game, if the game was at 7.30, 6.30, at night, I had a double cheeseburger, fries, a Coke, and a Frosty. <laughs> I can remember Chris Mullen, we played the Golden State Warriors. Chris Mullen coming to the locker room to say hello to me. He's like, what are you eating? Like, but, he, <laughs> but he watched it, and he's, he tells the story to this day. I did it every – had the ball boys go get me my, my food at 630, and I, I was able to play. Today, you mean to tell me you have masseuse, you have chefs, you don't practice? You have private planes, you have best the finest hotels, you have your individual workout guy, everything you could imagine. They spend millions and millions of dollars, and I'm not hating, this is the truth. I believe that we have failed these players, not by giving them all of these things, but by, by, by not putting a demand on the work. The way you get better is by working. The way you get better is by practicing. You don't have to practice like we practice. We did all of that without all of those things and practice for two and a half, three hours every day. And I mean getting after it. That was foolish. That made no sense. But to the same extent, to the same degree, not practicing makes no sense. Let's put our work in individually and collectively. Let's take care of our bodies. But I believe we have put players in today's game in position to get hurt because you can't fire up the body that hasn't been fired up and think that the light's on, we're going to play when we haven't competed Best, best times of my life, 17 years of playing, was playing one-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-three after practice, talking trash. We don't do that anymore. That's the way you get better, and that's what the greats do. He's not lying to y'all, man. This dude, when he, was, when he was playing for the Knicks, I vividly remember being young and watch him run around and tell everybody, I need my Snickers bar. <laughs> before the game, 20 minutes before the game, 30 minutes, he's like, I need my Snickers bar. What's up? I need my Snickers bar. I'm watching ball boys go room, room to room, try to find a Snickers bar for this dude before he played. We didn't get any money from them. Why are you shouting them out? My you bad. Said a candy you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. My bad. A candy bar. We edit that out. Cut that whole section. Cut that whole section. <laughs> but I, I would take a bite of a candy every single game for 17 years. Just uh, superstitious. I wasn't superstitious. I was doing it because I just wanted to make sure I kept my energy level high and I wouldn't get weak during the course of a game, and they'd keep the rest of the candy just in case I needed any more throughout the course of the game. But And, and on top of that, I never lift weights. I lift weights one time in 17 years. I didn't stretch ever in my life, didn't lift weights, I didn't eat well. So what are the experts today going to tell me? You could have played 17 years? I did. Ta-da! <laughs> I mean, what, what are we doing? Yo, y'all don't listen to this dude's example. Don't follow. <laughs> but am I lying? <laughs> don't follow what he's saying. Think about it. Yeah, yeah. the Lord kept you. He blessed you. But that is not okay for normal people. Well, think about this. And you could, you could testify to this. I humbly submit I'm the strongest point guard in my era. Posting up, humbly submit. It's not arrogant. This is just telling a story. You had to double team because I was too strong for my guards. I cannot bench press 135 at no point in my life. That's true. Now, that's true. Think about how foolish that is. They would tell you I'm weak, but I was the strongest dude. Yeah, but you, can, you can't give the example that you was you never stretched and you was eating. I can, that's not the norm. For a dude that's, that's 17 right now, you should tell him he should stretch. <laughs> no, I, I would tell him he should stretch. Okay, okay. okay. But, I'm, but I got to tell him what works for me. That's true. Fair, I can remember fair, Kenny Smith. Fair. Kenny Smith, the great Kenny Smith on TNT. I can remember Kenny Smith. We, we, we picked him up in Denver towards the end of our career, and he's at half court touching his toes and all that. And all I'm doing is just jumping in play. He's like, you still don't stretch? <laughs> he knew me growing up. He's like, you still don't stretch, dude? Like, no, I, no. I, don't, I don't do any of it. You never stretch. You didn't stretch after you retired and was playing at LA Fitness. You didn't stretch. No. 
And I'm not saying that's the route to go, but we're here on the Mark Jackson show speaking the truth. So to go back to what you were talking about, I'm sorry, but you said a lot. You think the players today aren't putting in the same amount of time that y'all put in? Not in the competitive lane. They don't practice as much, which is okay. Mm -hmm. But they don't. there's some that teams that don't practice at all. So I think it's a fine line between taking a little bit of the old school and making sure you practice to a certain extent, put the time in, making sure you compete a little bit, even if it's a 15-minute you know, scrimmage or something, just something that – so I'm not facing a competitor or obstacle or a challenge for the first time at 7.30 when the lights go on. I want to go over that screen and roll for 15 minutes with live defense so that I know how to react. You're not telling me, but I lived it and I know how to react. Not dummy offense that I'm not going to face when the lights come on at 7.30. I want to put us in position to be effective and successful because we practiced it. That's what the great teams have done. Do you think that the collective IQ of the NBA has raised over the years or has diminished? It has diminished. And that's, I'm saying that again, not as an old school hater, but a respectful individual. Has the talent and skill level raised? Yes. I'm not hating on the old school by saying that these guys today are more talented and more skilled than old school. So don't so take it with a grain of salt both ways. But because we were not as talented, skill wise, athletic wise, think about me. I I, I don't if, if 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 I was born with the skill level of some of these guys today, I'd have never made it. It forced me to attempt or get as close to being a basketball savant, a basketball genius as close as I could to put me in position to play. I had to be smarter than those guys on the court or I couldn't succeed. I had to know, be put in every situation by watching the game, studying the game, and preparing for the game that I had all the answers. Now, that don't mean I was going to be successful, but it wasn't going to be because I didn't know what to do. Over the years, all the players that you've coached and played against, are there any that stand out that's like, that dude is brilliant when you played against him, like this dude knows the game? Yes. You mean playing? Or, or, either, or, either one. Oh, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch. I mean, Magic Johnson was brilliant. Michael Jordan was brilliant. LeBron James is brilliant. Larry Bird is brilliant. You can go on and on. I, there's, there's a list of guys. That, I, I believe that Chris Paul is brilliant. John Rondo was a brilliant basketball player. I mean, you got guys that know the inside outs when, it, when you're talking about basketball and competing. Um, and I love Jason Kidd is brilliant. I love the chess match that goes on on a nightly basis, ones you can see and ones you can't see. There's some coaches that's brilliant and some that's not. So it's the same way with players and coaches across the board. But I really enjoy watching the excitement of two guys, whether it be in suit and ties or whether it be at the point guard position or another position on the floor, matching their mental game. I love, I love watching that. Whether it be basketball, boxing, baseball, it doesn't matter. A pitcher against a batter, I, 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 get, I get a kick out of that. You ready for picture time? I guess so. We got a good one today, y'all. Let's, let's, let's prop it up. All right. Most people out here could tell you right in the neighborhood, right around the house where Kobe built. The Lakers recently unveiled a statue of him, and you got to visit it. This is a picture, man. What was that like? That was recent, and it was, uh, it was great because it gave me an opportunity to show love and uh, just go down there and just spend a moment with a guy that I had tremendous, tremendous respect for, appreciation for, and as much respect for him as any athlete I ever competed against or covered because I know what it took for him to get to where he got to. Uh, respect him as a, as a basketball player, then got to respect him as a husband, a father, and a man. Uh, watch him develop. But just going down there, a guy who tragically obviously lost his life, but just acknowledging greatness and spending a moment with him um, and appreciating the beautiful statue. And to know he's going to get three of them, well-deserved. Uh, great story with Kobe Bryant. Shaq, Kobe, and the Lakers win their first championship during that run against my team, Indiana Pacers, in 2000. They don't win the championship if Kobe Bryant doesn't take over game four in Indiana. Shaq fouls out, we go into overtime, and Kobe Bryant basically says, get me the basketball, get out my way, and takes over the game. I remember him scoring two or three straight on Reggie Miller, and I say to Reg, I got him. 
Let me get him one play. Let me get <laughs> stupid New York City mentality. Think I, I, I'm, I got him. But I'm not thinking I'm going to stop him. I'm thinking I'm going to hammer him and I'm going to send a message. Young fella, this is out of time. Dude makes a quick crossover through the legs, top of the key, elevate. Did it so quick, I got no chance to even reach and hit him. Elevates, knocks down the jumper. I'm like, Reg, you, you got him. <laughs> <laughs> I got another for you, man. You got that was him. it? But yeah, that was it. They win a the championship because he took over that game. And that's, that's what, given respect to Shaquille O'Neal, who averaged, I believe, 39 points and 17 rebounds in that NBA Finals run. But Kobe Bryant won that championship by winning that one game. They, they don't win that game. We win game five. We're up 3-2, coming back to L.A. for two games. And they're not beating us two straight games. But a uh, tremendous team. A tremendous basketball player, one of the all-time greats. I'm glad you got to enjoy that finals from the court because there was some nonsense going on in the crowd with, with me and mom back in the day. Really? Do you want to talk about it? We, oh, yeah, I want to talk about it. <laughs> I want to talk about it because you, we was, we came to the game. I remember it. I was young. I remember it. It was, it was crazy, packed. We up in the stands. Y'all started losing. It was a duel with the, the, you know, the twirl thing. Yes. Where if you twirl it fast enough, the electric message. Like goes by. Yes. This dude up there twirling it, twirling it. So mom's looking like this dude is so loud. So next thing you know, he's like, Lakers, baby, Lakers, <laughs> Lakers, baby, Lakers. I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, I want I'm mad. I'm like, I don't even remember, eight years old or something. And I'm looking at him like, oh, I want to fight this dude for, for <laughs> cheer for Lakers. Then he comes, he goes, F Mark Jackson. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking at mom like. Nah, you're not going to let him say that, right? The dude going crazy. Sure enough, she pulled him to the side. Said, let oh, me know. tell you something. We know. We know. <laughs> She's not going to bite her tongue. <laughs> sure enough, that was, that was, Kobe was cooking. Kobe was cooking. I can't lie. So did you put him on the list? Did, did, I, did you add him to the name oh, of the bad, list? My bad, my bad. <laughs> yeah, Kobe. We, that was already, he was already on the list. Okay. So you know. <laughs> okay. All right, let's, uh, let's go to the next picture. Let's prop it up. All right. We got you and the great Jack Nicholson, man. You know, he doesn't just talk to anyone. This is, this is, this is legendary, man. This is what, great. What were y'all talking about? What's so funny? He was just showing love. Yeah. And you're right. He doesn't talk to everyone. Um, one of the greats to ever do it. Um, I can remember when I first retired and I, I joined the media world and I was covering an NBA All-Star game and... Jack is standing there. And I didn't know he didn't talk to anybody. I'm, I'm brand new. I'm a rookie like you at that time. Uh, <laughs> shots fired. And I just go up to Jack like, you know, I know Jack. NBA Finals, he was there. We had encounters. We talked and all that. I respect him. I go up there with the mic and he, he whispers, you know I don't do this. But he's like, but I'm going to do it for you. I'm like, wow, this is Jack. This is Jack showing me love. So wow. every time I saw him, it's a laugh. It's love. Uh, and, and I don't take for granted. When you show these pictures, I'm standing there, a nappy-headed kid from Brooklyn, Queens, New York, that dreamt of being an NBA coach, an NBA player, NBA analyst. That dude is standing next to these greats, and I don't take that for granted. And, and I, I go back to the, to the point of being a young kid when I'm in the presence of, of greatness in particular fields. Uh, this is a, a picture that I cherish, and it's not fake laughs or fake hugs. Mm -hmm. It's uh, value in the moment. One of the greatest actors of all time. It's unbelievable. You got some good pictures, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you the importance of, you got to start taking them. Like you all of, all your friends on the what? internet sending, sending questions and all that, you better, you better yeah. document those yeah. moments, man. Wait, wait, why don't you post any of these pictures on your, on your Instagram? I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. You just hiding? You low? No, I'm not, I'm not the best at post, posting pictures and then putting captions. Every time I post a picture, I get a text a uh, call from one of one of my kids saying, "Take that down. You got to say you got the wrong angle nah, or the wrong man, caption." Y'all, I'm, I'm working on him. I'm working <laughs> on him. He's loosening up. He's posting more on Instagram. He's laughing more. He's he's letting his shoulders loose. We lie. I appreciate it. I appreciate. I appreciate it. <laughs> I love you, Dad. Love you too. All right, last one, last picture. Let's let's put it up real quick. Let's stay in Hollywood, man. This is you. And the great Adam Sandler. Was this on a on a set or were y'all just hooping or what's what it, what's this? That's why I really don't have I'm losing respect for you. You can't what tell you I'm saying you can't tell I'm in character. 
We just finished talking about Jack. <laughs> you lose the respect. No, we just finished talking about Jack. You can't tell that I'm in character. You can't tell that that's not your dad in that picture. I'm in character. What what was what were you what were you playing? Um insurance salesman? What were you <laughs> Oh, the what picture a- is on the set of Hustle. Okay. The last uh, I believe the last movie a couple of years ago with uh the great Adam Sandler. Again, an absolute great. Called me. Uh, had some some words in the script for me, but basically everything that I said in the movie was was basically put into the movie. You know, we just ad libbed and freestyle and wound up being a, a, a excellent role. Fortunate that he called me and I had the opportunity to fly down to Philadelphia for about a week and uh, film the, the scenes. And the movie turned out great. Another all time great. And the most impressive thing watching Adam Sandler in the movie. He's starring in the movie, but at the same time. It was like watching Magic Johnson, or a great maestro, or a great point guard. He didn't miss anything. So if he was filming and he was right here filming a scene, he knew the extra picked up the ashtray the wrong way. He had vision all throughout the, 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 the scenes and the sets and the reads. He'd give you little nuggets on how to read your part. Uh, newfound respect for, for him and uh, loved the guy and a tre- tremendous opportunity. And I'm, I'm still available for the next... For the next scene. Were you just getting choked up? No. Talking about, I, I love Big Daddy too, pause, but that's, you about to cry? Keep on living. <laughs> no, you keep on living, you will realize how important <laughs> and how valuable it is when somebody does a little something extra for you. No, you know, no, you're right. That's the truth. That's the I truth. Got no, I'm messing it, with you. You know there's no shame in me crying. No, I'm messing with you. No. Adam Sandler is a legend. Okay. Adam Sandler is a legend. I wasn't no. getting choked up, but if I was, so what? No, it's all right. I'm just checking. I'm just checking the temperature. Thank you for okaying it. I'm just checking the temperature, <laughs> man. Let's give a shout out to our sponsors really quick. Underdog Fantasy. Click the link in the description below and put in the promo code MARK. That's M-A-R-K for a matched $100. Go do it now. That's a wrap. Thank you for watching the Mark Jackson Show. Special shout out to Underdog Fantasy, to Cam and Mace. Keep the questions and comments coming. By the way, we got a brand new IG page. Click the link in the description. Please follow. Blessings.